Okay, so now we want to solve polynomials. A bit of echo in here, boys. Um, it's the null factor theorem. It's the null factor law of the that we really use to solve polynomials. We need to get a product of terms equal to zero and then each of the individual factors are equal to zero. So question 14a is set up for that. The only way this expression can equal zero is if one of these is equal to zero, which means x minus two is equal to zero or x plus one is equal to zero or x plus three is equal to zero, which means x has to equal positive two, negative one, or negative three. That's how we get zero. And that's the advantage of factorizing. Um, obviously something like B, we have to factorize it first. Let's try the synthetic approach. Um, I did also notice an example of that in the textbook if you wanted to have a look. So the coefficients, one, negative four, negative 11, and 30. Um, we have to find a zero first, won't we? So one, four, I don't think one's going to work. So let's try P of two, which is eight, two squared is six, four, which is minus 16, plus 22, oops, minus 22, plus 30, which is gonna equal zero. So P of two is a solution. So let's put, we get two out the front now, because that's the solution as opposed to having x minus two as a factor. So there's my solution two. I bring the one down, two times one is two, add them together, um, I get negative two. Two times negative two is negative four, add them together, I get negative 15. Two times negative 15 is negative 30, add them together, I get zero. So there's my one, so that means my factors x squared minus 2x minus 15. So if I solve that, I get x minus 5x plus 3. My original factor was x minus 2. So if I want to solve this equal to 0, it means that x is equal to 2, 5, and negative 3. So I guess don't forget that all this section here, that's the same as my dividing. Yeah, just another way of dividing to get my, my x squared factor. Solve the following by grouping. Grouping is the way we should really look first, especially if it was a tech free. So, and the way to tell the grouping might work Four 11s are 44. So one times four times 11 is 44. So that, that's a good hint. So if I take x squared out the front, that gives me an x minus four in that first term. Take 11 out the front, I get x minus four as well. So it factorizes to x squared minus 11, x minus four. So that implies then that we get x squared minus 11 is equal to zero, or x minus four is equal to zero, so x is equal to plus or minus the square root of 11, or x is equal to four, they're my solutions. Similar thing, um, if I take x squared out the front there, I'm gonna get x minus a, and if I take 11 out the front there, I'll get x minus a as well. So I get x squared minus 11, x minus a. So there's my two factors. So again, x squared minus 11 is equal to zero, or x minus a is equal to zero. x is equal to plus or minus the square root of 11, or x is equal to a. Give it a go.